What's up, nerds? So, Discovery Season 5 is not going well. Um, in fact, it sucks. <laughs> um, real quick, you guys, my daughter is going to be in here with me. She wanted to hang out with me, and uh, I'm going to let her. So, if you don't like it, then uh, get out of here. Whatever. All right, so it looks like these episodes are getting worse. Like, the, the writing on these episodes is so bad. And you know what gets me is they're always, like, every single season, it's like they have to, like, like, Almost like they have to get, like there's, um, oh, what is that called? A MacGuffin. Some kind of MacGuffin. Uh, you know, and they have to, or, well, in the last seasons, they've, they've, there's something that's going to destroy the universe. And in this one, they just have to go and get clue after clue. And it's like they're trying to do, like, this Indiana Jones kind of thing. But it's not fun at all, like Indiana Jones. It's like the, the, the these writers I mean, but it's Kirksman track, so of course it's terrible. It's just terrible. It's really, really bad. There's and there's bad acting all the way around. It just sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna get into this breakdown, and I'm gonna share you with you my thoughts and everything of this whole thing. But we went back to Trill, and I mean, in all honesty, I just don't care about this episode. I don't care what goes on. It wasn't. It wasn't fun <laughs> at all. I was just, I was just like the whole time. I was like, "This is bad writing." The, the whole time, the whole time. All right, why don't we just go ahead and get into this breakdown, and I'll meet you on the other side. All right, here we go. Adria and Tilly identify a trill spot pattern on the map puzzle piece, and it leads them to the 24th century trill named Janelle. So they figure out that this guy Janelle, who was a trill. Um, he and, um, we'll find out some other scientists later on, but they, they said there's a clue on Trill. So they have to go to Trill. Captain Rainer comes aboard and Burnham orders her new first officer to get to know the rest of the crew. So they figure out that this guy, Janelle, who was a Trill, um, he and, um, we'll find out some other scientists later on, but they, they said there's a clue on Trill. So they have to go to Trill. So Captain Rayner comes on board, and Burnham is all like, you need to meet the crew. And I didn't put it in the rest of my breakdown notes, so I'm just going to say it right here. He meets with the crew in five, uh, in, uh, like, 30-second intervals, and he's like, tell me something about you that nobody else, that I can't read on your record uh, in 20 words or less. And then after he goes through it, uh, Tilly, she confronts him because you know every white man on this show needs to be put in his place by a, a strong independent woman and it's really quite absurd and annoying and i mean like i just want to be like tilly first off he is a commanding officer so don't don't be disrespectful like watch your tone honey and second off i'm like you know uh you, you know who gives a shit about you tilly anymore okay you abandoned the discovery so don't sit here and get up on your high horse okay and this guy was a captain okay you're just some fat girl that teaches other people how to do their jobs so why don't you why don't you uh, uh dial it back okay stamets is focusing on trying to unlock the secrets of dr valak's old tricorder and he ignores adria's clear stress about seeing gray again so stamets is all like up in his world like we care and gray is all like mm, i haven't seen i haven't seen uh what's her face in forever or, or she uh, uh adrena is like i haven't seen gray in forever i'm so nervous we haven't talked you know she's a she's a priestess or whatever and uh you know uh like and then um Tig Notaro is all like hey man there's trouble in you know little china and everything and i'm like oh my god who cares no one cares. You don't care. I don't care. I thought, I thought, um, Ad uh, Adria was gone, the, you know, last season. I was, I was like, like, yay, we got rid of her. And I'll talk about them later when they both show up. Things are running relatively smoothly until the crew arrive on Trill and Burnham solves the riddle quickly and heads down to the caves of Makala with Adria, Culber, and Book. And they meet an old Trill. So they arrive at Trill and they can't come down to the planet because they have to have a riddle. And I don't remember what the riddle was and I don't care, okay? Uh, because it was so, it's so stupid. But of course Burnham knows because she knows everything. She figures it out like so fast because she's just amazeballs. Janal reveals that the next clue is close by and takes Burnham and Book with him. Upon their arrival at the canyon... Janal tells the group about how he, 
Dr. Valak, and four other scientists found the progenerator technology. But they decide it was too dangerous to hand over to the Federation in the middle of the Dominion War. Okay, so real quick, the two actors, um, Ian Alexander, who plays Grey, the Trill, and uh, Blue DeBario, I believe, that who plays uh, Adria. Wow, what terrible... A and uh, um, uh, the Blue Del Barrio chick, man, did she gain some weight. I'll tell you that right now. Because when she does this little look, and her double chin, like, pops out, like, like and everything. And uh, it's it's really, like, they're both really terrible actors. I don't know who told them that they could act, but they lied to them. They're really, really bad. Uh, I Every time they were on screen, I was, it was cringe up the wazoo. And uh, I really do not like these two characters or these actors. They are not talented. Um, and I think just because you're, you know, a member of the a certain uh, uh, peoples doesn't give you a free pass to be bad at your job. So, so Janelle... Uh, Janal, he reveals uh, that he knows where the clue is, right? And he goes and uh, because he gets, he possesses the doctor. He possesses uh, Dr. What's-His-Face. And they are, he tells them that him and a bunch of other uh, scientists and Dr. Valak, they figured out where the uh, progenerator technology is. And they set up all this stuff. And they didn't want to tell anybody because of the Dominion War was going on at the time they found out what was, what was doing. So they hid it. So, uh, so for somebody who was worthy to find it, and I'm like, oh, who cares? I'm like, I'm like, if it was me, I would just like give up and everything because I just don't care. Burnham and the team end up being hunted by giant Intranoc predators, and once they arrive at the location of the clue, a monster gets in their way. So they end up being um, hunted by these creatures, which, I mean, these creatures, I don't know about you, but they looked almost like the the alien species from uh, Wreck-It Ralph, you know, when they go into that game that's uh, the one chick is in, and they're the aliens with the eggs and everything, and then they go into the Candy Crush game. They look like those alien creatures, and I'm throwing up a picture of them up on screen, but they looked exactly like that, except they could cloak. Back at Starfleet, Ambassador Saru is setting into his new office with the help of his fiancée, Tarina. They plan to make their wedding announcement before heading into a resource meeting, where Saru argues for more allocations to the small worlds he represents, which ends successfully in a compromise with others who are concerned. All right, so Saru has really downgraded in manhood this episode. Like, oh my gosh, what a little bitch. Okay, so he is all like, he is just basically like simping so hard for uh, Trina. Yeah, so she says jump and he says, um, exactly how high would you like me to jump? Because I can, I can jump very, very high. And the whole time you're just like, what? He's just very like uh, a big pussy. And so, uh, so they go into their, their, uh, resources meeting, which I'm all like, oh, look, socialism, but in the future. And, uh, they come to an agreement, which I'm all like, ugh, this is fun, super fun. So glad we came here. And, uh, and it was just, it was, it was just a lot of nonsense that I, I personally just did, again, don't care about. Trina's aide, Duvin, tells Saru that he is concerned about how the wedding announcement will affect the Navarre politics. But when Saru raises the issue with Trina, she doesn't react well. So the the aide to his his uh, his his her his husband is because we know who wears the pants in that family. He um he so he comes to him. He's like you know your your uh, announcement to your wedding, your engagement announcement is really going to hurt the politics on uh, Navarre, uh, a.k.a. Vulcan, because some people um, are, hard, are the, you know, the old ways are there. They're very purists, the Vulcan purists and everything. And so you should probably hold back, especially with what happened today in that little meeting. You should probably hold back and everything. And so uh, Saru... He tells Trina, you know, maybe we should uh, hold on the with all the stuff. And she's all like, you Duv Duvon, talk to you or some whatever his name is. Talk to you. And um, I will not. Uh, there's a reason I did all of this, Saru. And I wear the pants. So you're going to listen to me, you stupid male. And uh, and he, he 
you know, hip, yip yips right into place. Back on Trill, Book attempts to use his glowing forehead empathy connection, but all he gets from the monster is that it's rather annoyed. Book then tries some distracting techniques with Burnham heading to the rock with the clue symbol on it to retrieve the big prize. However, things do not go as planned and they get hit. They are subsequently pinned down as a second monster shows up to cause havoc. So Book does his little his little glowy forehead thing, <laughs> which is so stupid. And the bugs are like, I'm pissed. And you're just like, okay. And they're running around trying to open up the rock that has the symbol on it that uh, the doctor, uh, uh, Janal, sent him to. And they, they get stuck behind um, a rock. Burnham holsters her phaser, showing the utmost respect to the Intranox, who are now calming down somewhat. Book does the same and communicates that they just want to leave as they slowly back off. Soon after, they find Dr. Hugh Janelle on a rock, quipping, I see you survive. Turns out Janelle drew them to the nest after suggesting they arm their phasers. By connecting them instead of shooting, they have passed another test. Janelle was willing to let them die just to see if there was goodness in them. However, they did survive, which results in them winning the prize, the clue and the second map piece, which was hidden under a different rock. So Burnham, you know, she figured out that, oh my gosh, they've got eggs. They're just trying to protect their babies. And she comes out, you know, palms facing forward, arms open, and then they connect with them. And they're like, sorry, we're going to leave now. We weren't trying to, to mess with you or your babies kind of thing. And Janelle is sitting on a rock. And he's like, you survived. The, it could only go to those who didn't want it. And I'm all like, what is this, Harry Potter? You know, what is this, the, the Sorcerer's Stone? Like, get out of here. These, these are the crappiest writers on the planet like they just take from other stuff and they put it in their their stupid their, like the science in this show is not sciencing it's it's so stupid and so they get the piece of the map uh out of a different a random rock <laughs> he just goes into a random rock and grabs it and then um you know he gets he gets unpossessed after culver gets swapped back he heads back to the ship to recover from being possessed when Burnham catches up with him in the lounge, they contemplate the spiritual implications of the journey they are on, and they seek the technology of the gods. So oh, they're just they're just sitting there chit chatting him and Burnham, and just they're just sitting there going on about this technology. And me again, I really just do not care. I'm just trying to get through these episodes so we can get through this final season so it can be done and over with. I really honestly feel like this is just the worst Star Trek show ever, ever. Like, there's no saving grace on this show, and um, which is a bummer. So, back at HQ, Saru apologized to Tarina for all the politics that were getting in the way, and they make up with one another. So, Saru apologizes, like a little simp that he is, uh, because he has no, um, you know, genitals. And he just, he's like, there's no, there's no manhood left in him, in my opinion. Like, Saru is just, and, and they did this on purpose, because he's the only, like, real like whatever male figure even there that's really like present out of the main cast and so yeah he just sucks the episode ends in the trill caves with bix returning to the symbiote pool and adrena and gray saying farewell turns out maul is disguised as a trill and she puts something onto adrena's sleeve before the ensign beams back to discovery so after uh, Adria and um, Gray, they break up, you guys. They broke up. Oh, no. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and uh, they're all sitting there, and they're just, like, connecting hands, and they're, like, touching foreheads. And Maul, she puts a tra what I thought was a tra I think it's a tracker, maybe, onto um, Adria, because Adria is useless on this show, except for to be used as cannon fodder. Uh, and she puts a tracker on there, so now they will know wherever they go, and uh, they'll be able to get there, you know, and, and, and surprise them. And so they go. He, she goes back up to Discovery, and that's the end of the episode. And so like I said before, this episode was worse than the last two. It's getting worse. Um, I personally just don't care about any of these characters. The show is poorly written. 
The only one that I'm kind of interested in is Rainer. Like, I'm interested in seeing where he goes. But they're not going to give him any time. He's a stupid white man. And you know, you know, we can't give these white males any, any time on screen and, and make them look good. They just have to be moody like little bitches. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just really bad. It's a bad show. It's a terrible show. I'm glad that this is the last season. I don't want to see this show ever again. And, uh, and I, I'm glad that it's going away. And uh, they can all suck it. So tell me, what did you guys think about this episode of Scar Trek Discovery? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite part, if anything? Did you think those alien monster things looks like the ones from Record Ralph? And tell me if you thought so or if it's just me. And, uh, you know, who's your favorite character? Is there any part of this show that interests you in any way, shape, or form? Tell me what you guys think. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you're new to the channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next Star Trek Discovery Breakdown and Review. You guys have a good week. Live long and prosper. Bye.